Guess what? It's time for Tech Talk from VoiceOver Body Shop. Boy, have we got a lot of stuff to show people tonight. Stuff from yeah. NAM. Yeah, we got NAM. We got NAM videos about uh, DPA microphones as well as Aston microphones. Very cool. As my headphones fall off my head. We also answered tons of questions tonight from Rick McIver, uh, Jay Horace Black, and we talked. We covered everything from booth design. Should you put a window in there? Uh, we talked about. What else? My gosh, there were so many questions. What kind of USB cable to use? How do you shop for mic preamps? On and on. A lot of good stuff. You don't want to miss this. Voice over Body Shop Tech Talk coming up right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voice over recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is, together, to bring you all the latest technology today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. You know what it's time for? It's tech not talk. it's not howdy doody time. It's tech talk time. We need a cheesy jingle. Insert yeah. cheesy. I'm jingle. working on it. Bing. Working on it. Within a couple of weeks, we'll have it. I need to get some more footage of you behind cabinets and things like that. <laughs> if you do I'll work on it. I'll produce it. Okay, you, you got right. it. Outstanding. Um, so we went to NAM, which stands for the National Association of Music Merchants. Yeah, it's overwhelming yes it's, it's, it's a very lame name for a very exciting show i mean yep. it's it is if anybody's familiar with ces this is like the ces of the music business so it's yep. tons of gear and lots to look at lots yep. of people watching but lots of that lots of music Bands performances here. Yep. celebrity performers rock stars you name it it's it's busting at the seams yeah now now of course it's the music industry and all right. of the stuff that we use in voiceover. Every last bit of it, with maybe a tiny percentage of stuff, is designed for making music. Yeah, there's occasional products like this, like these headphones, you know, that, that, that Harlan designed. But everything kind of started as supporting music. And now right. we're finding, carving out little uh, niches in that world for the voiceover world. Right. And we found a couple of things. We found a couple of things. You know, that like, we used to think, that ah, there's nothing new under the sun. And you go to NAM and it's like... Well, maybe there's something different that might be useful. It gets harder and harder. I mean, the more you go, the more you see the same stuff. Right. And the more you see people you know who you want to say hello, hello to. to. <laughs> and before you know it, after 10 years, you can barely get around the place. You're like, right. hey, what's, yeah. hey, what's going on? Yeah. So we yeah. work really hard to find new stuff. We right. found a couple of a things. A couple of things. And we're going to highlight a couple of them tonight. Microphone well, stuff. Microphone stuff. and uh, But the rest of them, we'll, we're going to make sure that we, we talk about every week about this for a couple of weeks. Uh, but all the stuff will be available on YouTube, so you can see some of that. Uh, but one of the first places uh, we went, the second day, actually, was a uh, company, DPA Microphones. Let's take a look at that one. And we're back at NAMM 2019 here in Anaheim. And last summer, I had the chance to work with DPA Microphones, a Danish company. They make great microphones, and they've got some stuff that might be very interesting to the voiceover crowd. And we're talking with Gabriel, who's a rep with them, 
And uh, talk to us a little bit about the uh, the MMA uh, program here with the with the uh, the app and how it can uh, be used with voiceover. Sure, be honored. So uh, I'm Gabriel. It's a Danish professional audio DPA. So Daniel, thanks for uh, for coming over to chat. The MMA A is actually a two-channel analog to digital converter that can record of sample rates up to 96 kilohertz at 24-bit, so very high resolution for the microphones. It comes with an app that you download to your iPhone. It gives you four presets. It gives you a mono, a stereo, or a dual mode. It gives you gain, it gives you high-pass filtering, and it gives you a lock. So you can actually set this uh, up in, 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 you know, before your, your next event and lock out the video engineers. Right. Because you can set your audio and lock it out and keep it nice and pristine. And then you can open a third party app, whether it be a video recording or uh, a, an audio recording app. Right. And they'll trust that your DPA microphones are going to come in pure into the third app. It will now take over as the audio engine for the iPhone. Right. It's also a core device, so it can mount on your PC or your Mac. You can use it as an interface for your Pro Tools or any, any software driven platform. Wow. It, it, it'll take uh, any of our microphones. You could, it has a micro dock connector on here right. and the Thunderbolt connection to either USB or to, to the iPhone Thunderbolt. And uh, you have two microphones. If you put one microphone in, it sums and it goes to both channels. If you put two microphones in, it senses that and it gives you the option for stereo or dual. Wow. <laughs> because sometimes in VO you may want a, a, a natural sound right. and the voice sound. Um, so you can do that, or you can go two microphones as a stereo recording device for for field nats or something like that. Right, and and with a filter, like if you've got a high pass filter on there, if you're like in a closet in a hotel, you can you can you get rid of some any rumble or anything that's going. Sure, on it's going to bake right into the capsule. So if you're in front of a fan that's producing electronic hum, you can put these guys on and and then you'll get rid of some of that 60 cycle or whatever that is getting into the recording so that your recording is more pure. Now in the studio world, if you're at home in your VO studio, yeah. you can hook this up to your iPhone or your computer or your software and you could use any of our microphones. You could use the, the Dedicate line, which is the larger capsules, uh, the cardioids, the super cardioids, the omnis, doesn't matter. These are all modular, so they just unscrew. And then there's an active cable that actually takes it down to a micro dot connector. You can, you can use the MMA, or you can put a wireless adapter on here and go wireless into a Anything. shore or right. a Sennheiser system. Right, right. But the end message here is that you can use this line of microphones, you can use the headsets, you can use the 4060s, the slims, basically any of our microphones except maybe for the de facto, into your iPhone. Yeah. So it's I, super cool. Wow, and that is super cool. And they are great sounding microphones. And the, and the dynamic range is higher than any microphone that can fit in it. It's 114 decibels. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. I was just so impressed with what they sounded like. And then you add the convenience of this. This is yeah. really special. Yeah. Gabriel, thanks so much for so, talking to us. So, very welcome. Thank oh. you. Bye, guys. We were just talking to Sue, and she's like, I don't remember seeing them. And I said, you were there for one, one day. day. There's yeah. no way you would have caught every one of these vendors. I mean, <laughs> there was a whole new hall that was the North Hall yeah. that was new last year, and it's an entire huge building that if you don't know it's there, it's super and easy And that's to where miss. all the electronics was. That was so. a lot of the pro audio was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah which, which is really what you know, so we, we that, did. So that rig, I could see it being really cool. I mean, I'm still wanting to try an ear set that's good enough for voiceover the and one. to have the ultimate super lightweight portable rig that you can use anywhere right well the, the one we had last summer uh that they you know we used it here on the show actually for a couple of nights and it was clear as a bell i mean you know it's just out here you're not going to get any pops or anything like that it's a really nice headset microphone and i know you've always been searching for that for and one that's this, yeah for one that sounds as good as the condenser mics we're used to you've got to spend some 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 pretty serious dough because yeah. yeah, these aren't make, cheap microphones. No, to make a capsule that that's that tiny. I mean, the, the the tip of the mic is like the size. It's like two millimeters. Yeah, it's very difficult to make them to make them and make them sound as quiet as these. That's a big thing. So yeah. these guys are the closest to doing that now. And you know, I think the idea of doing long form work, 
e-learning or audiobooks or whatever with nothing in the way yeah just... where you're not locked into a mic placement the whole time and just it just make yourself so much more comfortable yeah don't you think? right and and the and the uh, the app they have with the uh, the interface it's it's a really nice little modular system like we said it's not cheap did they really but, were they were they announcing prices i didn't well, the app is free the app's free of course right but the, uh, but the system the system you know go online check out dpa and uh and see what they they are i mean this, it's not super expensive but about the same cost as you say for a 416 yeah. or, a, or a tlm 103 right but a little bit more versatile which i thought was really cool yeah it could be yeah yeah now you talked to the people at aston mics i did yeah aston is a relatively newcomer. They've been around a couple of years. They're kind of known for their odd, looks like galvanized steel pipe microphone and their purple amphitheater looking reflection thing. Right. I mean, they make and, some and the grills are kind of wavy. They and, make yeah, unique yeah. design, but this is, this one's a falls outside of what we're used to seeing. And, and, uh, I, I thought it was really innovative. So here's the Aston microphone stealth dynamic mic. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's George the Tech here at NAM 2019 Day 2, and we're digging in here with Aston Microphones, and a little something different from them, here to tell me about it's Cliff. How you doing, Cliff? I'm doing good. Hey, yeah, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, we, we were familiar with, from your last couple of years, your Origin mics. I've heard them. They're really yes. interesting, great-looking mics. They sound really nice. This is a totally different, you know, form factor. What's this? It is. What's unique about this mic? So this is our first dynamic mic from Aston. And there's a lot of features with this that's going to be very competitive to the SM7B. Um, first of all, it's top addressed here and has a built-in pop filter. The cool thing is that the capsule and the PCB is suspended by uh, servothane hemispheres. So it keeps it afloat and you don't need any additional uh, shock mount. Nice, that's handy. There's also a Class A mic pre built in. So it will auto detect if you're running phantom power. So the cool thing is once that phantom power is running, you'll see that there's some purple LEDs here to indicate that the phantom power is on. Now, if you don't want those lights on, you could actually turn it off here. This little uh, button here. That's nice. You get, yeah, you get the purple lights, but you can turn them yeah, off. Yeah, it if might be easier. Yeah, like with the purple. lights. Are here. Yeah, but so that's just to indicate that the phantom power is running. So it's dynamic. So of course you don't need to use that phantom power, but it has that studio grade quality, which is really remarkable. There's also a four-step voice in it, so it's like having four different mics in one. You have a voice one and a voice two. So based off of your uh, vocals, whether it's soprano or baritone, you may just want to mess with it and see what works best for you. There's also a guitar setting, which is really uh, unique because it actually works for acoustic and for electric guitars. Hmm, okay. So it's pretty universal. And then yeah. we finally have a dark setting, which is similar to a ribbon mic. It has a nice, rich, deep tone to it. Wow. Great for a kick drum. Gives you kind of a John Bonham style um, <laughs> approach, I'd say. Or in our world, where we do a lot of voiceover, it could give you that classic radio sound. Absolutely. And this mic is people, ideal for podcasting. Yeah. You know, it really is a universal product. Definitely. Well, yeah. it's something we might want to try out uh, in, the, in the VO studio and see how relevant it is. We may be surprised by Dynamic Mic for the first time in a long time. Anyway, thanks, Cliff. Appreciate it. Of course. It. Yeah, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. So Cliff was one of the most professional presenters, wasn't yeah, he, he? He was yeah, very polished. He, he, actually, he was. I, <laughs> most of the guys there are pretty polished. But that's an interesting microphone to uh, for people to think about. Remember what the price point was on that? He, I, if I recall, was around three forty nine. It was under four hundred. Right. Um, that's a lot or a little. You know, it's right. all very relative. But you know, if you can get a, a two distinctly different voicings that could be useful for different things out of right. one mic, right? It's kind of a two for or more for more for one. It has four, yeah. yeah. Mark's it's a four voice mic. So that mo voice thing is it's changing analog circuit inside the electronics of the mic. So normally a dynamic mic has no electronics. Right. Normally dynamic is the simplest microphone to, there pretty much is up this side of a ribbon mic. I mean right. it's just the diaphragm and, and a couple a of wires and a transformer and, and yeah, and sometimes a transformer and then the plug and that's it. But this thing's way more going it's on. It's what we call an active dynamic. Mic. Yeah, it's it's a dynamic, but then inside it is a preamp. Right. That's powered on phantom power. And then I'm probably just repeating what he said, but you know, it's just it provides you that ability to get different sounds out of out of a dynamic mic without having to know how to do that. Right. I mean, so, yes, I can go so to you my have EQ. A light? Yeah, it has a purple light. I, it's, <laughs> it has a purple light that lights up when you plug it in and the phantom power is on. But the fact that they actually made it so you could turn off the light 
Well, oh, I thought good. that was pretty smart. I mean, I not everybody's going to want a bright purple light. I, I, I think the idea is, is that everybody wants that on the air light, which yeah. of course yeah. only we have. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. You'll, you also see they always at Aston, they always have that, that, that reflection type thing that's designed to keep the microphone from picking up as much background noise. Not really a voiceover device. Yeah. And with that microphone, the whole idea of probably even thinking about using a dynamic mic is to try to reduce the amount of background pickup. Right. But I'm wondering like a dynamic mic that is designed to be sensitive because it has a lot of gain, will that inherently pick up less background noise than a, an equivalent condenser mic like if you have them if they're the same level that's what i'm, I'm curious about that that's yeah. going to be an interesting test right. so we'll and there's see. only one way to find out we have to just put it up in the studio yeah, that's right and and of course it's also important because you know we we saw a lot of microphones there i mean you know there were there were manufacturers i'd never seen before. we'll say saw we we heard <laughs> some of them you can't tell what the heck really you're hearing in a trade show. Right. Like the noise floor, forget it. I mean, you're hearing in the yeah. background of all yeah, the Yeah, but my voice sounded great on top of that. <laughs> yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't test a mic at this show. The only place you can really, really test a mic is where you're going to use it. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, so it's kind, of, it's kind of silly, you know, to go into a store and say, oh, I like, I like the way this sounds. It's like. It's not really what's important. It's yeah. you really have to try it in your own environment. I, I used to actually walk around these trade shows with a handheld recorder and plug it into the mic, and then I thought it was real clever because I was recording myself. And it was it was kind of pointless. Fun yeah. exercise, but pointless. But yeah, I just want to show, hey, you show us the camera. The camera, this is so the coolest. At thing. one point in the DPA video, the shot sort of like <laughs> and went off to the side. <laughs> so I've been learning how to use this new camera. Let me put it in front of my gray shirt so you can see. The, it's so small that it almost disappears. I mean, I'll turn it off again. And watch its little head. All right, here we go. Looks like a character from Star Wars. <laughs> you know. It is. It's like a little chicken head. You should name it. It does need a name. It does need a name. This thing is called the DJI Osmo Pocket, and it's a... All the videos that you're going to see from Nam were shot with this little camera. I've seen that online. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the picture quality it's is... It's all drone technology. Stunning. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a gimbaled camera that will stay on uh, on spot. Yeah, I mean, the DJI, which was a no-name company five years ago, now makes a camera they so good dominate that they the world took with, it off the yeah. drone, put it on a little stick, and they sell it. And it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, and the sound... Here's the deal. The sound from the whole thing was those two handheld mics. Yeah. That was going to a Tascam DR40 separate recorder. So we were doing this sort of yeah. old school it was, style. It was quite the rig. Yeah. We had the audio going to my hip pack. When you watch the, <laughs> when you watch <laughs> the Centrance uh, Mike Port Pro video, yeah. you, there's a shot. You can see my purple and green hiking hip pack. <laughs> <laughs> complete with mud stain from oh mud. yeah yeah really <laughs> it's funny but anyway that's how we did it, and it, it uh i'm really i'm really happy with how, how it ended no, up turning it, it, out. It, it looked great you know and uh yeah we got some really good video anyway we got lots of questions from our audience we're going to get to those so stay tuned for those here on voiceover body shop tech talk we'll be right back <laughs> As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, Go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's, how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo 2 go free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. 
If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to go -Go's David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Yes, and we are back here on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. Important to note, the people need to understand what we do. Right. We don't just walk around shooting videos of cool gear. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'd we like do, to do that. that. Yeah, I would but... like to do that for a living. I wouldn't be so bad, but no, it's no, not how we no, make a living. No. One of the most important things you need to have as a voice actor today is a home voiceover studio. After you have the training. After you have the training with great people like Mark Cashman and some of the other great coaches we have. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But you have to have a home studio in 2019 and 2020 and 2021. And, you know, it's getting easier, but... Not everybody really understands all the specific, particular, little tiny things that you have to understand to have a home voiceover studio. And there aren't a whole lot of people that really understand it because they're all experts in one studio, their own. Right. Or music studios, which or, or, have different or, kind of requirements. De or, definitely different. You know, you can't just fix everything with a plug-in. We're getting there with plug-ins. I know, isotope, this and that, but you still can't fix a bad-sounding booth. Sounds like you're in a hollow box. It's going to stay that way. Yeah. Can't fix it in the mix. So if you need to learn how or you want to build a new, a new studio for yourself or you really want to find the best spot in your house and set it up properly so it's set it and forget it and you just hit your record button and go, you got to talk to one of us guys, which is a really Eastern way of saying it. Oh, one of us guys. One of us guys. No, one guys. of us guys. Yes. Uh, you could talk to, to me or you could talk to George. And if you want to talk to George and consult with him, where would they go? Mm, you can head over to georgethetech.com or if you like the shorter domains, so you can go to George the dot tech. I like that short domain, but I'm, I, a lot of people are like, hey, what? so hey. George the tech.com works. Um, but anyway, you can, there's a menu on there with a lot of different services. You can book me by a schedule, a time, or you can do flat rate services like processing stacks or a sound check. And Dan calls his sound check something different. Over at his website. Which is homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah, I have a specimen collection cup there. You click on that. It's a Dropbox. And, you know, for 25 bucks, I will analyze your audio. I had a lot of that this week. Please, lot. audio only, folks. Yes, audio only. Yeah, we've... That, Causes some other problems, but uh, if you want to, if you really want to see what your audio is sounding like or what it's supposed to sound like, whistle right. uh, from the perspective of people, people who know what it's supposed to sound like. Thousands of raw audio studios, <sighs> not demos, but the real, real audio. The way audio comes the out way, of the studio, the way it's supposed to come out. Uh, check me out over at homevoiceoverstudio.com and set up a consult, or let me check your audio. And let's get you sounding the way you're supposed to sound uh, and not guessing at it. Because I think a lot of mistake a lot of people make is, is they're like, I sound great. When in reality, you don't hire you. Mm -hmm. 
So you're not doing this to please your own ears. Also, you don't know if then what you're monitoring yourself through is is truly accurate or what is going to translate to the real world. Exactly. Sounds great in my speakers. Doesn't really matter. Right. Well, we got a couple of questions here. And the first one is from Rick McIver. Well, if he's McIver, he should know what he's already doing. It's no problem. (laughs) That joke. Uh, I'm planning that all day. I have a question. (laughs) About booth design. In an effort to make my recording environment as quiet as possible, is it better to build a window in my booth and stick my monitor outside to reduce noise or keep the wall solid and put the monitor inside the booth? What is the isolation trade-off of a window versus monitor noise inside the booth? That's interesting. Yes. Now, as someone who's written an actual white paper for the National Association of Broadcasters and presented it at the NAB, I'll let you take the first step. Okay. okay. Well, thank you very much. All right. Well, I mean, uh, if windows are expensive, I was just talking to a client about this today. <laughs> you know, these like, are kind of expensive. Yeah, I was, he was like, I want to put windows all along this one wall. You know, and I'm like, right. hey, he's like, is that going to be a problem? No. Sound wise, you can deal with just about anything. If you have the money, you can buy heavy enough glass. So you can get rid of the noise of the... You know, the the noise that comes through the glass, if you get the right glass, all this kind of stuff. But glass per square foot is way more expensive than uh, wood or drywall. Especially double pane glass, exactly. which you're going to need for soundproofing. Yeah. So if, if you're not super claustrophobic, you can do away with the window inside the booth and just have a monitor inside the booth. And yeah. the, the, there's not a really, there's no concern anymore of noise from the monitor. Old monitors could have a whine, whining noise or not they might anymore. have had... All the new monitors are LED backlight. They should be, unless something's wrong with the monitor, they should be totally silent. Right. And they're not glass. The yeah. the, the, surface the surface of these things is, like is soft. Plastic. I mean, you, you touch it, it moves. Yeah. And that actually absorbs a lot of the sound, yeah. so it doesn't reflect around quite the same yeah, way. It can, it can still reflect high, high frequency a little bit, so you can just carefully angle it, and you can fix that very easily. So, uh, no, I, w- I would go with the no-window monitor in the booth. All right. If you want to get really clever, put a camera outside the booth. Yeah. Oh, look, you can see outside. what's going on. That's now. right. You know, I mean, if you spend a lot of time in your studio or in the booth, yeah, I can see where you might want to get a little, you know, sunlight and stuff. If you're in there all day. Yeah, but not everybody's doing that. No, you're in there for 30 seconds at a time. Get, out. get in, get out, go outside, listen go to the edit. birds, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Brian Ahrens asks, a very strange tech problem happened in my studio the other day, and I'm hoping you can help me solve it. Hmm. Uh, the tip of my headphone jack, or rather the one-eighth to quarter-inch jack adapter, uh, broke off in the headphone port of my Yamaha AGO3 when I was removing the jack. And now that loose tip is stuck in there at such an angle I can not I can rattle it, but I can't get it out. I've tried fishing it out with bent paper clips, but had no luck. As it is, the phys- it's physically preventing me from inserting a new headphone jack all the way into the port and is so preventing me from getting a solid connection, meaning I can usually only hear in one ear. So I'd like to get it out. Uh, will removing the back of the AGO3 give me access to this space so I can get at it, get it out? And if so, is it safe for someone like me, like him, uh, to attempt, who is careful but highly ignorant about how these machines actually work. Well, first off... Have you ever cracked yours open? I certainly have. Okay. But I'm what someone... What did you find? What did I find? I, I, I Actually, the same thing happened to me on my AGO3. Is it serviceable? Uh, no, it's not. Because it's all solid state. And what they use for the, uh, the headphone connections, the jacks, are these plastic modules that they soldered, soldered right into a PCB, it, right? So right. a green piece of plastic that's right. the circuit board. So I took it apart thinking, well, you know, maybe I could solder. I mean, heck, I built a microphone. I should be able to I look. Um, no, this is not happening. You know, most of these interfaces are fairly disposable. Uh, the problem. That's true at this price. Yeah, yeah. The problem he's having, and the same problem I had, was that the when you've got a jack stuck in there, it. Turns off one of the other. The other one. I was going to say it's it got turns, another headphone jack, but right. you're still get. It's still getting. It in. interrupts the signal right. to the. I was other. yeah. I was finally able to pull the one out, but you know it it was broken. There's a plastic thing on mm. the end, and I and I because you walk away, you know, and it, it happens. You forget you're wearing headphones, it which happens. is why I don't like wearing headphones. Um, anyway, I was able to fish it out, and I was able to get stereo back, and just using the uh, the quarter inch uh, phones out. It has two. Uh, headphone uh, outs on it. It does. It's got so, a mini jack too. Right. To be even more fragile. Right. So yeah. taking it apart ain't going to help you. Yeah. I, 
at that price, having a spare is probably the way to go. Mm-hmm. I, I hate to say it. This stuff is not built to be serviceable. Anymore. I got lots of spares. You know, I, I buy a new interface. Like, well, I got a backup. You know, so it's... People spend more for one vacuum tube than that whole thing costs. So, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it all depends on what you're looking at. Why would you use a vacuum tube? Let me read tube? off that way. That way I'm not re- off mic when I read Oh, okay. Mike, there you go. Right, right, let's see here. The questions are... There we are. From Jay Harris? I all believe right, cool. so. Jay Harris Black says... Hey, Jay. Um, I have a Universal Audio Apollo Duo, which is a very popular interface, a 416 um, and a 416 mic. So basic combination everybody uses works well. George and Dan, are there any plugins that you would recommend that I get or should I just keep it simple? <laughs> You've watched the show, right? You know what yeah. he's going to say. Um, are there any settings on the unit you would recommend? Um, you don't. Generally, you don't need to do any processing on the Apollo at all if you're doing post-processing. Right. So if you're doing auditions and you want to get a little post-processing, use what you already have set up in your DAW. Chances are you've already worked with Dan or I and had some processing set up. But if you hadn't, that's the way to go. Have a stack or rack made that gets you a sound for your your auditions that you like. That's supposed to sound the way it's supposed to sound, not the way you like. (laughs) The way you think it should sound. (laughs) Right. And the thing is... If you do it on the Duo, yeah, you, we can. I've set up plot processing for folks on the Apollo for many, many people, and I always do it with a disclaimer. Like now, now once this is set up on the Apollo, you're married to this thing because that is your sound now, and that processing chain that's in there is you got to use it. If you go travel, guess what? You got to bring that thing with you wherever you go. It's part of your sound. So if you're gonna do that, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, which would probably be doing a lot of iptidal sessions or. ISDN and Source Connect, where they where you want to kind of already process the sound just the right amount right. Um, for that kind of work. But um, no, I, I really wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, it comes with bundled with pretty much everything. everything. I would I, want. You, there's nothing you cannot do with that. The, but it's not designed for voiceover. Yeah, it's got a lot of stuff going. On. I mean, I've set up the the API Vision for folks with the expanders and blah blah blah. That one's useful, but. You know, you don't need a lot of that stuff if you're already doing it in posts. So. Right. And if you don't know what something does, don't use it. Yeah, I mean, if you <laughs> can't hear simple. what it's doing or you don't know why that knob does that thing, unless you can hear the difference, you probably don't want to mess with it too much because you're yeah. going to get to make a mess out of it. Next question from Steve Hufford. Uh, two questions. I have heard uh, have you heard anything about Audition getting punch and roll? Now, we had Durin Glebes on here from, from Adobe uh, a couple months ago. Right. And I think we asked him that, and he said, no. No, it's still not happening. Yeah. There's, in multi-track mode, you can, there's a guy that, oh, man, do you remember? Somebody wrote a script Somebody for wrote him. a script. Larry, What's that? Larry Hudson. Larry, 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 Larry on Hudson audition? has a script. It's a it's Stephen J. Cohen. Stephen yeah. J. Cohen, there's three, there's at least, there's, those aren't the names I'm thinking of. There's another guy that wrote an actual plug-in that actually loads in, in Audition. It's a little pop-up window yeah. that does, there's a lot of add-ons, but I don't think it's natively has it yet. Yeah. I, you know, I think some people need to understand that they don't have to use just one program because no. you can use something simple like Osin Audio or yeah, Aud- Audacity or something like that. Just record the track and then import it into Audition and then you can do your editing and all that stuff there and and that's a lot simpler. Don't yeah. it's like, well, it's, I love what people say. It's such a pain to try and move it from one program to another. Click. It's it's, it's not <laughs> Come I mean, on, kids. it's not yeah. especially when trying to do that same thing in another program is much more difficult. In that but, case, audiobooks tends to be the workflow that people get the most you know, right. caught up on and right. I say record in whatever you want and edit in this other thing that works better. Right. Or like Twisted Wave has got kick butt batch processing. So if you're doing e-learning, record in whatever you want, Pro Tools, Reaper, whatever, and then bring it into Twisted Wave. So Absolutely. don't be stuck on one program. Or vice versa. Uh, let's see here. He says, second question, can RX-6 or 7, which is made by Isotope, which is a, a sound uh, cleaning device uh, program, uh, match background sounds and or voice to insert a new phrase into a previously recorded script? Now, Whoa, that's a little that's bit more question. sophisticated. Yeah. I mean, wow. if you're trying to insert something into something else, it's really not rocket science, especially if you're doing multi-tracking. Because you can take the original sound, copy it, generally room tone. A, a room tone or something like that, and just deposit it in, a, in another, you know, in, a, in another track in the timeline. 
Yeah, that's and, what I would do. I would take some of the original room tone and lay it underneath the thing that you dub. Right. If you're trying to keep a consistent room tone, I mean that that's just a truism for any kind of audio editing for voiceover, especially audiobooks where you're going to have a lot of edits, but you never want the room tone to change. Keep the room tone consistent that way. But an idea of, the idea that a plugin could store the room tone and kind of automatically put it in, that's actually an interesting concept. I don't I I don't frankly I don't know. Yeah. It does a ton of stuff. Maybe the advanced version does it. I, I don't know. Well, we'll try that. Mm. Let's see here. Carl G. asks, uh, in order to move my computer from the booth, I had to use a generic 3M USB cable to my 2i2, just like everybody else. Uh, I've just upgraded to an Audion ID14, which I love, and wondering if there's a value to upgrading the cable within reason. So cables... With I, digital I, audio, like USB... <laughs> It works or it doesn't. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, generally speaking, that's the case. So if it's working fine, then just keep using it. And if it's causing you trouble, then change it. I can tell you USB is really persnickety over longer distances. So make sure, you know, if, if you have one good long cable and it's reliable for you, then stick with it. A 12-foot USB cable. I used to have one in my old studio. Yeah, tw- I mean, I think the great. Sure mics came with a 12 or a 15-foot USB cable. Yeah. That's about as far as you can go without having to get some interesting gadgets to extend it right. with an active extender or this or that, you know, right. and it gets and it, do- it doesn't affect the sound. The only thing it will no. affect is its connectivity more than anything yeah. else. Things it, will if blank out. Yeah, when it's in a long distance, it, the, the device can, may not get enough power or something weird like yeah. that. Uh, Jamie Dawson asks, uh, I, Dawson, McDowell, McDowell, yes, oh. I need a new mic preamp setup. What's the best way to test it out? What's the best fit for me? Well, what do you want it for? Yeah. I mean, what, what are you trying to do with that thing? Is it, is it just a utility to boost the signal of your mic? That, and, and is the interface you're already using not doing that well? Cause like the ones built into the 2i2, the ID14, outstanding, the Apollo, the mixer face, on and on the Steinbergs, all those mic preamps work perfectly fine. Like, there is no production engineer who's going to listen to your audio and go, well, the preamp's kind of fuzzy sounding. Unless something's Doesn't technically happen. wrong with your gear, they're not going to hear it. Yeah. So um, in terms of shopping for mic preamps, I'm assuming you're asking because you're ready to buy a high-end mic preamp. And if you're buying cheap mic preamps, there's no point whatsoever. So get ready to start spending... Honestly, at minimum, $1,000. More than you're spending on your mic. You probably, the, yeah. Because yeah, if you're shopping for mic preamps, you're looking for something that's different than what you already have built into the interface. What's already in the interface is clean gain with minimal distortion. Right. Now you're looking for something that has something else. Right. Character, some kind of something to it, like a thickening or a distortion and or tube distortion or something like that you know they just want to hear you as you exist not you with all this other stuff and if you're gonna i mean there are some guys i mean some of the promo guys who we can count on the fingers on one hand who need this stuff who are doing stuff somewhat live because they're recording it directly to another studio and they're like okay good to go that's Nobody. I it's mean, a very small niche. Yeah. Of people don't don't that. worry about that stuff until they ask you to start doing that. Don't worry about it. In the meantime, any good average interface like the two i two, any of the focus rights or the audience or you know or the or you know the uh, the universals, uh, the arrow and yeah. the uh, they all sound. They're just making ones and zeros, guys. Boy, these are if you if you're doing a mic preamp shootout, you're gonna have to have a really good ear to hear the differences. The yeah. differences are. Subtle. They're very subtle to the to to the layman or to someone who's a non-engineer. Right. To an engineer, these are shades of mauve. Exactly. That's my analogy I always use. The differences are really subtle. Okay. We got two more questions here. Brian cool. uh, Jester asks again, weird I know, but uh, I have a need to have a two mic setup locations running into the same computer. I have two focus rights. Is there a way to run both at the same time without unplugging one and then plugging the other in? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Adobe Audition is my software. Uh, I so, need to have two mic setup locations running in the same. I, now, if he, is he using like one with one microphone, like a solo, or has he got uh, a two i two? In which it's case, his, you plug both mics in. Yes, he's have two mic locations, so he's got. Two mics with their own interfaces. Each one has a focus, right? Right. Going to the same computer. Well, it just in Adobe, you just tell it which of the two you're using. Right. I don't know how Adobe will differentiate which is which since there's two. Right. And they have the same, they're the same model. So maybe it says one in parentheses, two in parentheses, or 
somehow Audition's going to differentiate that you have two of them. Right. You got to go into the setup and into the audio MIDI in the hardware and say this channel here, that channel there. Yeah, you're going to choose not which of the hardware is going to be. It's it's not that hard. It it's probably takes just as long to literally mm. switch the two USB cables. Or just get a small mixer. <laughs> yeah, you could do it that way. I mean, if you don't want to buy anything else, then it, it's probably just as fast to switch the two cables, honestly. Cause otherwise, you go into Edition, you open to Preferences, you go into Hardware, you choose the sound other sound driver for the other. You know, it takes probably just as long to do it that yeah, way. Yeah, okay. Um, last question last from Devox. Uh, interested in getting off the Apple Microsoft treadmills today or in the near future? Can you address using Linux for VO? All you no. use. <laughs> it's for geek. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> you know, we're not geeks. Well, maybe George is a geek, but you know, it, it's. I'm not a Linux geek. I can tell you. That. Well, that's good. The it's thing, Linux. Li- Linux. Linux. Right. I'm not that uh, much of a geek that I know how to say. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. The, the the fact is is that. If you're an audio geek, that's got nothing to do with voiceover because audio geeks don't hire voice talent. I mean, there might be a few, but they're certainly in the minority. Most of them are listening on a laptop speaker and they really don't know the difference. Doesn't mean that you buy lousy stuff or cheap stuff. You get good stuff, but the subtleties between some of these things is so minor that nobody can really tell the difference. So stop overthinking your home voiceover studio. Every time you're thinking about an alternative... um operating system outside of the two big ones is you know you're getting into territory of are you going to support this yourself and if you're not who do you know who's going to support this system now that you've hacked together using some build of linux from some guy whatever it's going to be tough i mean we used to run our mac we used to run our show on a mac that was a hackintosh yeah it was running a mac os on a windows pc that we had built it was and it a worked disaster. fine until it didn't. <laughs> and then getting support was a nightmare. Really? It sucked. It was terrible. Right. But yes, you can run Audacity on Linux or Linux. Uh, there's a lot of audio hardware that will work on Linux. Um, it can't be anything fancy like the Apollo. Right. If it uses a custom driver thing like the Apollo, it's not going to happen. Yeah. If it's one of those plug and play devices, like a you know USB headset or a USB mic, that'll probably work in Linux. Probably. Most likely. So All right. you can start there and start dabbling. Have fun. Super. Great questions, guys. Tech Talk great. is fun. Lots I like doing questions. it this way. All right. We'll be right back after these. <laughs> I'll have to take a moment here to uh, ask you to listen to me and thank and buy products from one of our wonderful sponsors at Source Elements. They're the creators of Source Connect. It's a tool you need at this point. If you're at that point in your career where, first of all, people are asking for Source Connect, well, that's a no-brainer. But B, if you're trying to get the attention of an agent or jobs that require live real-time direction and live real-time recording, this is a tool you want to have in your tool belt. You can get a demo right now. I mean, you don't have to have a reason to have it today. You can at least get the demo going on. Go over to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial. Get it ready to go. Get the iLock thing going on so you can use the software. Don't have to buy a little iLock key to use Source Connect standard. Um, Once you have it up and running, you'll feel confident. You know how it works. You'll you'll be ready to go. And then when the day comes, you got that gig. You can purchase the license online. You can pay for it outright, or you can do a monthly installment plan, um, which is actually a subscription. So when you do that, you get ongoing support throughout the entire time that you're paying for the subscription. So give it a try. Go over to Source Elements. That's source-elements.com. Get the trial. And uh, if you have a chance to tell them uh, that we sent you, we'd really appreciate it. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, 
the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Hey, it's time to talk about Harlan Hogan's voiceoveressentials.com. And Harlan is about to do the second reorder of the multicolor LED voiceover recording with remote sign. It's a huge success. Everybody loves these things. And they're offering a discount to owners of the original fluorescent sign as replacement tubes, as you know, are kind of difficult to find. LEDs pretty much last forever. Uh, you want details on how to get that special discount? Write to Terry at terry.lee at voiceoveressentials.com. That's terry.lee at voiceoveressentials.com. She'll give you all the details on how to get that. By the way, VoiceOver Essentials stocks replacement ear pads now for the Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones Versions 1 and 2. It's got Nappa leather and memory foam OEM pads. So go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Best place to go, go to the bottom of our website page. It's right down there. Click on the picture of Harlan Hogan, and it will take you right there where you can order all of these stuff, especially the sign which everybody wants. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected Respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders. When you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Oh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. And we're back. God, I love doing this show. <laughs> Especially when we get that kind of engagement from the audience. Yeah. It makes it a lot more rewarding It, for it us. really does. Uh, next week on this show, I'm not exactly sure who our guest is next week. Because we're not on next week. We do the tech talk again next week. And then we have another live we guest. We've got a few people li lined up. In, in, in the queue, but we're getting them yeah. confirmed. So That's stay right. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, well, we'll be letting you know about that. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Let's go take a look. We, uh, we have a lot of folks who donate on a regular basis using our YouTube link. It's right on the website, and they can subscribe and send these in regularly. And people like, oh, well, Maria's is not a subscription. I can tell you by the amount. That she mm. sent today. Nice that of is, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. She sent a donation. Um, Andrew Kaufman, he's a subscriber, sends a little bit every every month. Rick McIver, thanks, Rick. You know, I, I think he probably sent us a little bit of money because we answered his question. Which what a is, guy. You know, we appreciate really, it. Yeah, it's like a little tip. We thank, thank you. Uh, John Griffith, uh, Martha Kahn. Hi, Martha. Saw her at NAM, by the way. Yes, we did. Martha. That was fun. Um, Shana Pennington Baird, and I'm going to say it again because she's here. Shana Pennington, Pennington Baird. Baird. <laughs> Shana. <laughs> <laughs> that name, man, that's, that's a pain in the neck. What's? Are you waving? Oh, because <laughs> our, our technical director is waving to herself. <laughs> I think we've used up the oxygen in the room. Antland Productions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Kaufman, I already said his name. Joseph Valentinetti, um, Stephanie Sutherland, and Diana Birdsall. All right. All names that we've seen many times before. We thank you for your ongoing support. Yes. Hey, show us your booths. Yeah, like, we want some new ones. Whose palace is this behind us today? I yeah, this is, this is Mike McCall. I uh, did his studio maybe five or six years ago in the Studio City area. It's, it is awesome. Uh, the Almost best as thing, nice as this. The best thing about it is the boot, the, the desk, which you can't really tell from this, but the desk is like right in the middle of the room. <laughs> mm. You can walk entirely around it and never trip on a cable because 
everything comes up from the floor in the middle. That's the way it I should just, be. I, this is the coolest space. But anyway, yeah, that's. But you guys should send in your your photos. Send them in landscape and try to get them Not portrait landscape uh, enough lighting so we can see what's in the photo. We got a couple in there. Sometimes they're really dark, kind of hard to make out what's in the shot. And I know it's not easy when your studio's small to right. get an image that looks good. But um, keep trying. We'll, we will use the ones that uh, look good. Yeah, send them into the guys at VOBS dot TV. Uh, also, um, we're on alternate live alternate Mondays now. Mm -hmm. So you know, we do what we do our uh, our live taping on the first Monday generally, and then the third third Monday, and then yeah. we run our tech segment, the tech talk. Right. On the other Monday. Um, but if you come in live, you'll see both as we tape them together as right. we did tonight. Exactly. Uh, and if you want to be in our studio audience, like these fine people are tonight, let's have that audience cam shot again. Yeah. You could be here. Same thing. Right to the guys at VOBS.TV. Uh, we need to, of course, thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, we also have on the tablet you remember? Mr. <laughs> VoiceOver Extra. <laughs> At source elements. Of uh, vo to go -go. Uh, dot com And VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, of course. J. Michael Collins Demos. Great guy. I should have memorized that by now. But. After... Couple of years, we've had the same slew of sponsors for a while, which That's is true. very amazing. Yeah. We also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Our it's producer, Catherine, all the time. I know, uh, producer Catherine Curtin, Mike Merlino for doing great chat room. Thanks, right? Mike. He's getting the hang of that. We really like that. Yeah. And uh, of course, our amazing technical director who's just got it together. <laughs> She's dialing. And she it likes in. the wave to herself, uh, Sue Merlino. <laughs> we really appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, and of course, Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, you know, this isn't an easy business and we're here to help you out. And what we really want to do is make you sound good because when you sound good, you is good. I think that's the way it goes. <laughs> anyway, we say it differently. This doesn't really matter. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO BS. Have a great week, everybody.